Okay. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm just gonna move this. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so welcome to Museum Media, Data and Gender. <laughs> for one final time, if you're here for Community Wishlist, go over the road. <laughs> or stay. You're warmly, warmly welcome here. Uh, so there's three of us presenting today. So there's myself, Giovanna, and Michaela. Um, we're changing the order of our slides a little bit um, due to time zone issues. Um, so I'm gonna be up first. So what we're gonna do is we've kind of got three sections to today. I'm gonna talk about a case study that hopefully will get everybody thinking a little bit about um, one way that we've dealt with this in the UK. Uh, and then Michaela's gonna come in and talk about some of the more theoretical aspects of thinking about data and women and gender and commons. Um, and then we've got a session where we'll hopefully pick up the tempo a bit um, and get some conversation going. So I hope that sounds okay to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm aware I was talking very quickly just then. So please wave at me if I start going 10 miles an hour once more. Um, it's my own nervousness, not anything to do with you. So I'm going to get the slides to the right point. So just bear with me. And I'll breathe as well now. <laughs> Okay, so you'll get a little like prequel of like what Michaela's going to discuss later. So, you know, if you, I'm going to not have some spoilers. <laughs> yeah, look away now. That's the phrase. Okay, so in a different um, order than we intended, I'm going to start off um, with a case study. So for people who haven't met me before, my name's Lucy Moore. I'm a volunteer and a freelance Wikimedian based in the UK. Uh, so everything I'll be talking about references like the context of working within England um, and the kind of some of the tensions and some of the goals that some cultural organizations in England have. Uh, so last... Last year, um, I was very fortunate to get a grant from Wikimedia UK uh, to run a small 30-day residency in my home city of Leeds. And for people who aren't familiar with Leeds, the greatest city in the entire world, <laughs> uh, it's in my contract to say that. <laughs> it's in the north of England. Um, it's a really diverse city. There's 170 different languages spoken. It's both extremely rural and very urban. Um, and if you get a chance to visit, please come look me up. Uh, I'm always delighted to show people around. Um, but it's not a city that has many Wikimedians working in it um, or volunteering in it. Um, and the coverage of, you know, stuff to do with the city is, you know, could always be improved like everywhere. So um, in 2023, so last year, our, our council, so our local authority service, um, decided that they wanted to run a year of culture. There were several years building up to this. Um, so prior to 2023, in 2016, pre-Brexit, um, Leeds was trying to be European capital of culture. Uh, and then uh, England decided to leave the EU, so we couldn't apply to be European capital of culture. Um, but because Leeds is a very particular kind of city in the north of England, it decided to do it anyway. So there's stubbornness, there's like northern pride, we've got all of that going on. So, but also we're doing it without very much money. But we're doing it in this context of a very international city, one that wants to build its reputation and one that wants to look outwards to the wider world. So, uh, many, lots of the Leeds 2023 programme was based around working with global majority artists and working with artists both local and globally from marginalised genders. Um, they had a really wide network of people that they wanted to, to work with and the programme was very much based on like temporary experiences and performances. There were a couple of statues unveiled, um, one of which is incredible, but it was very much based on this kind of like transient art. Um, and uh, my mind as a Wikimedian was like, how are we gonna 
Like, how are we going to make sure that this stays, how, that this has a legacy? Um, which I think we all question like all the time. Uh, so this is one of the projects from uh, Zion Art Studio, who worked with the Leeds artist, and they're from Mexico. Um, and yeah, as I said, we work with some artists of marginalized genders as well. Um, and for the collaboration that we had between myself, Leeds 2023, and Wikimedia UK, this all aligned around knowledge equity. So Leeds 2023 wanted to support artists who wouldn't normally be working in Leeds. Wikimedia UK and myself are very passionate about making people's work better known um, so that it can be shared more globally. Uh, and also Leeds 2023 wanted a way to demonstrate their reach. So the perfect storm of Wikimedia. Uh, so what I did as part of my residency, it wasn't about editing Wikipedia, but it was persuading Leeds 2023, this temporary year of culture um, that is now finished, the organization doesn't exist anymore, um, to um, upload some images to Wikimedia Commons, so to change some of their licensing, um, and then to continue to like measure that impact. So it's a familiar kind of residency model, but it hasn't been done in the UK that I can see uh, for a year of culture, for, for this kind of like temporary celebration. Um, so I think there's, there's something that we can start to learn about from there. Um, and it's also this, you know, how do we make this more visible? How do we make the artists that we've worked with increasingly so as well? Okay. Uh, so it took a while to persuade Leeds 2023 that um, changing your licensing won't harm, won't provide any harm, especially because the organization was finishing. So it's not like they, they the charity is wound up that ran the year of culture. So they've got nothing to lose. So we worked with them to identify over 100 images of really high resolution, I should add. They're really high quality images. Um, and we use this network of how can we make people who've experienced different marginalizations more and more visible. And that started with like the image selection. So in the high vis, we, uh, we brought together a load of women and non-binary people to build a barn. Uh, which had not been done before. You know, it's normally guys who are doing the building. Um, we had uh, different people from our local carnival. Leeds has the oldest uh, Caribbean carnival uh, in Britain. It's been going for over 50 years. Um, and lots of other people as well. So we were trying to identify how can we use the images they've taken for their PR? How can we change that to change how the internet looks? And we did. So we've added 100 images to comments. And you might be thinking, OK, this is quite familiar, adding images. This is great. Um, but the case study and why this then applies and will hopefully help um, the rest of this session uh, to think about how, the, how data and gender um, can really kind of work together to, to build our goals um, is this idea of taking some of our images um, and uh, moving them into Wikidata and then using the Wikidata info box. Um, it's your friend, um, but it's also the friend of the organizations that you work with. Um, and it can really help organizations, I found, to start to reach audiences that they weren't dreaming about as we shall see. So I'm going to use this image as a case study. Um, so there are 100 different things that we put on Commons. Um, and this is kind of one of the, the sort of standout images, at least for me. So it's a photograph of um, two local polit well, two local, well, no, one local politician, one local academic, and an artist. Um, so um, the artist uh, is Yinka Shonibare. He's like an international Nigerian, British Nigerian artist. And he created um, the sculpture that's behind you, um, which is called Hibiscus Rising. Um, and it commemorated uh, the, 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 the racist persecution of a man from uh, Leeds called David Oluwale. And it's about bringing joy out of David's terrible demise 50 years ago. Um, and he stood um, with uh, our local councillor, Abigail Marshall, and a local uh, academic, uh, Eb Emily Zobel Marshall. Not related. <laughs> Just the same name. Um, uh, so what we did was we pulled out their individual images from this nice high-resolution picture. Oops. Yes. 
so here we've got, uh, so Abigail's currently our mayor in Leeds, uh, and she's the first African mayor that we've had in the city, so, which is fantastic. Yes, claps, thank you. Yeah, we're very pleased, we're very pleased. Yes, claps for Leeds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing you'll take away, Leeds is a great place. <laughs> um, and, you know, like, a, and as, as part of this work, I was like, I'm going to add this cropped picture using just the crop tool on Commons, four seconds work. I'm going to add it to her Wikidata item. Fantastic. Um, and I knew that it would probably get used. Um, uh, so because it was on Wikidata, it then got automatically used onto other Wikipedias that use the Wikidata info box, um, which was pretty exciting. Uh, and I expected it to be used on English Wikipedia. But what I didn't know was that actually she's a very well-known figure, or certainly well-known enough to have Wikipedia articles on Ebo and uh, TIAP, uh, and I think Hauser Wikipedia as well, but mm, now I'm not certain of that. Um, but for our audience in Leeds, for the people who have like commissioned this work, it is without outside their realm of achievement to be having their images used by uh, a community that speaks Igbo, um, or anyone who speaks Tiap. So it was really exciting for them to see their image being used in this way and to unlock audiences for them who, you know, perhaps will never visit Leeds, although everybody should. <laughs> Um, but um, but also to raise the visibility of some of the images that were taken as part of this program. Uh, another example uh, is you can see uh, this picture of a blonde woman. This is um, an athlete from Britain called Gabby Logan. Um, and her image, we did the same thing. We cropped her out of one of the, the image uploads. Um, and now she's on uh, Arabic Wikipedia which again is something that we wouldn't have been able to, to imagine doing. And we have a lot of people who speak Arabic in, in Leeds, absolutely. But again, it's like reaching out to these other audiences. Um, and for Leeds 2023, um, it's really great because whether we like it or not, a lot of our outreach is a numbers game. Uh, so we added 100 images to Wikimedia Commons. Um, at the last count, they've been viewed over three quarters of a million times in the last, since February, since February, which is really great, really boosts their statistics. Um, but what Leeds 2023 were really invested in was the fact that they were being used across 11 other language Wikipedias um, and on 70 different articles. But it was the fact that they'd been added to Wikidata that was driving it. Um, and it was something that I really think has like, you know, I know there are other discussions about structured data and its future, but if you're thinking about doing, you know, these smaller scale projects perhaps um, that focus on how we can, you know, amplify images of women and people who've experienced other marginalizations, then I really think, you know, making use of the, <laughs> the Wikidata info box, thank you to the designers, is really, really, really key. Um, and it's something that is quite easy and quite teachable um, to others, um, but equally, if the people you're working with don't really want to know, and that was the case in Leeds 2023, they wanted the results, um, they didn't necessarily want the skills support, um, then it's something that's actually very economical for you to do, as either as a volunteer, um, or uh, like me, I was lucky to have a support grant from Wikimedia UK. So my takeaways, Think about Wikidata while uh, Michaela and Giovanna are talking. Um, and uh, think about perhaps um, areas in your own editing or your own contributions where something like this might be useful to do. Thank you. And come to Leeds. Come to Leeds. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Michaela now, uh, and um, I hope uh, you enjoy it. Good morning, everybody. Um, can you hear me in the room? Oh, that's great. Um, so I'm just going to... Um, 
ask the help of my colleagues. So I just want to know if I can actually share my screen from here or if you guys can help me out because I don't have the commands um, for the Zoom. Muito obrigada. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. I'm so sorry I was a bit late. Um, and well, hi, I'm Micaela. I use she, her Ella pronouns. I am a regional ambassador uh, for art and feminism. And the, I am the, also the Wake Media in Residence at the Perez Art Museum in Miami in the United States. Um, and I am a Brazilian native who also edits in Portuguese, both in Portuguese and English. And I'm glad to share the room with you all. And um, I'll actually, today I'm speaking uh, as, a, as an art researcher who also shares content online about femme-identified visual artists through WikiMedia projects. And I will share actually things I learned and noticed about visual culture on Wikimedia. Um, you can pass the slides, please, um, if you're there. Thank you. Uh, but first, a bit, some data. So, um, and a question before I share an image. Um, think how, think how, think about um, how many times you in the audience uh, this week visited Wikimedia Commons and looked for gender-related content. I want to know what was the last thing you searched for um, is a rhetorical question. You don't really need to answer that. But um, did you find the word what you were looking for? Um, that's my question. And if uh, actually someone moving the slides could press enter, there's a graph for us to talk about. Um, there we go. Um, so this is actually a graph that I took from one of the Wikimedia, recent Wikimedia release data. Um, and I imagine that your question to, did you find we're looking for on gender related content on Wikimedia Commons is actually, it's likely linked uh, to key research data telling us that although 49% of uh, Wikipedia readers are women, um, fewer than 20% as we, most of us know, of the, the biographies are about women uh, and gender related content, we are well aware that in 2024, these figures might also correspond with the visual content on Wikimedia Commons and, and visual evidence um, on the platform. So I think here I'm making the case um, for us to think about, you know, these numbers and also think about our. Uh, or actions and edits uh, on the platform, the, the Wikimedia projects, not just the Wikimedia uh, Commons, but everything else, the, the projects we edit. Um, and this is going to be, you know, a brief reintroduction of the topic. Uh, it blends well into Lucy's presentation because I also think uh, a lot about how can organizations uh, benefit from these platforms, as we all know that they can, but Sometimes the message of how they can do it is not really there. Um, so you can pass the slides, please. Yes, you can press enter and enter again. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna make the case um, for museums and gender issues. So in the, in the case of uh, glam institutions, I'm bringing museum data to comment on the representation and disparities, honestly, 
within collecting institutions in the United States. I have more uh, United States data because it was released uh, uh, in 2019. This is a part of a group of scientists and uh, historians. I hope some of them are in the audience right now. Um, looking at the collections of 18 of most amazing prominent art museums in the US, but many uh, of them are among the largest and I think most significant globally and to be thinking about their collections uh, and a few examples of the National Gallery of Art in Washington DC, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, um, and the SFMOMA, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art and so on and so forth, it's a big list. Um, and what they found, um, you can press enter again, please. Um, it's just the diversity that was um, in some art museums um, was not much greater uh, for museums actually specializing in modern art as well. We can see that from the graphs, um, we have a few shocking numbers of at that time, particular time in 2019, 87% uh, of these collections were made by uh, male artists um, and 85 of them were identified as white. Um, and if we break out these numbers a little bit, there's uh, a figure for um, white women, Asian men, uh, Latino and Asian uh, in the case of Asian and Asian descent and Latino and Latino Latinx descent. Um, and everything else, um, all other artists and groups, they were within uh, 1% within these collections. And I'm bringing these numbers here, uh, not just to let you down, <laughs> but also for us to reflect, you know, um, through the shots, uh, what I'm trying to 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 make the case here and actually talk about the problem we're addressing overall, that this uh, there's a, there's a discrepancy between who generates information and the content that is actually available to us, uh, knowing that some of the the content producers who are not being included in institutions, uh, we have to find other other ways for these images um, to be available. So yes, you can uh, move along please, the slides. So it's just, uh, this is more of a reflection uh, slide for us to think about, you know, guidelines. And um, I think coming up with an ethos and ways of uh, thinking and being and doing things individually and collectively, because we definitely have uh, a gap, uh, as we all know, when we've been talking since day one uh, in Wikipedia and the internet as overall uh, in visual evidence and representation and authorship as well. Um, so um, you can pass the slides. I'm gonna share the slides later on for you guys to um, think uh, later. Yes, you can pass, please. Yeah. So I will bring, what I'm gonna do is just bringing strategies that I use uh, working um, with living artists and contemporary art institutions that is actually thinking a lot about how us as Wikimedians comedians and uh, glam professionals and enthusiasts, um, we can actually do the work regarding knowledge sharing on a global scale, um, in a very simplified actually manner. It's just uh we we should just be committed to to the creation and high the highlighting of voices and stories that are not actually as we know and as Lucy was just telling that unheard, but they we can just do it. It's actually possible. So can you please uh enter please? Twice, yeah, and again. So I'm bringing actually two um Really interesting examples uh, after working with artists. Um, and I think here I, I vouch for us uh, as we talk a lot about in the art and feminist movement to embrace our learning and un unlearning sometimes of knowledge. So that we may dream of new ways of uh, creating uh, a better internet. So in this context, uh, a few ideas and opportunities really for glam professionals and weak mediums working uh, with living visual creators and makers and contemporary cultural institutions. 
and the first case is Silvana Mendes, uh, as a, as an artist, as, and she is from Brazil, an artist based in Brazil. And at some point um, in 2020, she visited the archives of the Moreira Salles Institute in Brazil, who works with uh, Wikimedia and Commons and Glam uh, on the internet. And uh, they also have buildings, beautiful buildings, it's a big collection. And she visited, visited their archives to create digital collage, um, commenting on the lack of the identifiable authorship in the in a particular collection at the Moreira Salles Institute. And the second case is Martins Fortunato, who's also now based in Brazil, um, and visited actually another uh, collection and won a prize by Art and Feminist to create this collage um, reclaiming photographs of Black women in the 19th century, um, the cultural landscape of Brazil. And what I'm, I bring them here because, you know, I think these are great, great examples of using uh, open source uh, visual evidence to create even more work um, and creating references on the internet. And we can talk more about, you know, licensing and how the, the process actually took place later on. Um, but I think these are such great outlets also to talk about uh, Wikimedia Commons with living artists. Um, and we know that sometimes how they might be, you know, curious about how they can actually contribute to these platforms as well through the conversation being mediated by institutions. And you can pass the slides. So now that I showed an artist interested in the 19th century uh, and 20th century, I bring Madeleine Hunt uh, Ehrlich, who is just a very one, um, a, a, a prize winner filmmaker, a living artist, 21st century artist, filmmaker and visual artist, and making the case for uh, the another problem we know well as Wikimedians, the, the lack of image of uh, face shots, honestly of these artists on their Wikipedia pages. So this is also another way of working with uh, living people and institutions and galleries um, and their state sometimes if they're deceased, but it was a matter of having a curator in the institution connect me with Madeleine and Madeleine being so thrilled to uh, submit an image uh, to have it online. And I'm showing this particular image because now this is a a photograph that has been shown in several of the film festivals uh, being used at, to uh, portray Madeline uh, in many of the festivals. So she ended up winning a prize with her latest film, which was at the Whitney Biennial here in New York. So as you can see, there are a few ideas for, uh, for you, uh, very cost-effective ideas of possible ways of thinking about, you know, um, discrepancies and the lack um, of content. And honestly, there's not uh, amazing, there's amazing artists out there producing and in need of the smallest and simple uh, touch, which is just having their faces on the internet. Um, as we've been discussing this within the movement, this is much needed. Um, and this is something I suggest you to do. So I think we're just, as I, Told you this will be a very first run. Um, you can move to the, the the next slide, please. Which is just pretty much the last. And I think here I I just ask you to reflect before we move on to a a, a maker project with G after her talk. Is just considering the impact of your edits and overall image use, you know, and your contributions, because. Um, as you know, uh, professionals and fractioneers, uh, we we know we can access these effects. Um, and being aware of the possible biases, um, and as we ease into G's uh, section of the presentation, I would also like to remind you how um, that if human knowledge and diversity are not represented in within Wikimedia projects, we do have to find other viable ways to make sense of these stories and perspectives, uh, we, we have to make them visible. This is our duty um, as it's just public service, pretty much um, being an open source uh, platform. 
So I thank you all. I'm here for questions on Zoom. My email is over all this, this presentation and I hope you're having a really good conference. Um, thank you, my colleagues. I'm gonna pass to Chi. Are you guys okay? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing that I will say is the same thing that I said yesterday when I was having a work um, meetup and um, the previous day as well is that I completely lost my ability to present live because of COVID and um, it has been a while. So I apologize for reading my notes. Um, and yes, let's start. So um, I'm Giovanna Fontenelle. I am a program officer for the Coastal Heritage Team at the foundation. And I work a lot with uh, shared data, museums, images, a lot with commons as well. And uh, in the end, I think it was quite good that Michaela could have um, uh, was before me because she gave a very good uh, introduction to my topic. And I will um, go a little bit uh, far away from the topic so far, and then I will come back to it. And I hope that you can accompany through this journey a little bit. And for some of you who are, I think, older in the movement will probably be, have already uh, heard me talking about this. So I'm sorry if I am a broken record. Uh, but for a few years, um, we worked on this project called Shred Data on Commons. Those who know Sandra Falconier, you probably are aware of this project. And you, if you use Commons, you probably have used this um, possibility as well, Shred Data on Commons. So this project happened from 2017 to 2019. And the idea was for making to transform Commons, Wikimedia Commons, in a more accessible platform for as many people as possible. Commons was most accompanied by plain text descriptions, so weak text and templates and categories. We still use the categories, but at the time, uh, the idea for this project initially, it would that we'd be kind of um, turning Commons in this uh, completely shirted uh, platform. But we do have a shirted on Commons now. And um, uh, the categories and the weak text, they were uh, usually available on one language only, which was English at the time. And right now we see this in more languages, right? Uh, so shared data, uh, method, shared data allows the files to be accessible in a robust, consistent, structured, and linked format, a format that allows software to be understand, to, to understand and um, on a large scale what the metadata fields means, so in a shorter way and to connect them to other databases on the internet, putting them in a broader context, so linked. Um, shared data is also more granular and easier to translate than unstructured data. I'm sure that most of you are kind of familiar with this idea at this point, but I am uh, kind of repeating because uh, we do have some new folks in the room. Um, and at the time, one of the things that we also wanted to solve with Shredded on Commons uh, was the quality of the search on Wikimedia Commons. And this is very important because our search at the time would not really show images uh, the way that it was, you know, the way that a, a proper multimedia platform would show. And today we do have a media search, which is the main one that you use when you use Commons, right? And this is thanks to this work that happened a few years ago that improved the accessibility through language and the quality of the search, right? And so just like uh, on a nutshell, shared data, uh, insertion, uh, shared data on Commons is a shared data insertion system for Wikimedia Commons, a multilingual information understood by humans and machines. And um, it adds multilingual uh, captions to files, inserts Wikidata information into media files on Commons. Oh, sorry, that was this slide. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, for example, this image of sugar cubes, you can have that in like um, the captions in more than 25 languages at this point. You, we might have more than that already because this is uh, a slide that I've been using for a few years. Uh, you can access that link and let me know if we have more captions at this point. 
Um, and we also have the shared data part in which you can see uh, this image of just 12 sugar cubes with um, the picked information about the fact that we have 12 sugar cubes. They're, they are white and they have the format of, I cannot read it anymore, uh, <laughs> cuboid. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so a lot of different information, shared information about that one image. And that, as you can see by this GIF, uh, you can see that it is translatable to any language, right? So we transformed Wikimedia Commons in a multilingual platform. This is the example of um, uh, artwork with modeling the like, shared data in a, mo in a specific model way. I think since I made this slide, um, the, some of the depicts guidelines changed, but this is also you can have an idea of how it shows on the page, right? If you are not familiar with it. So after we uh, shared data on commons was a thing, we decided to have what we call a shared data across Wikimedia, which is basically having the files who are that are on commons brought to other platforms, right? So to Wikipedia in a more proper, shorter way and other in the other projects as well. And the idea for this project is th was that uh, we would give Wikimedia users a more inviting, more efficient way to research and find content. So through media search on commons, we would add filters, which you, if you use commons, you can see that they are there, and the search for properties and qualifiers. So a search that would not only allow the search for images, but also for the shared data within those images. Uh, it would also allow machines to recognize Wikimedia content and suggest relations to other content. So image suggestions in, um, from Wikimedia Commons to, um, to Wikipedia in several languages, right? And I will be talking a little bit more about that on a, on a, in, in another slide. And design a uh, way to extract articles and pages to enable new content formats, so new content formats with multimedia um, files. One of the ways that we can um, access this analytics and visualizations from these images is using uh, um, information from Wikidata to search on commons. So uh, initially I thought that um, this presentation, I would be able to click on this link. So I created some slides that would show uh, the results from this search, the, those three searches here. Uh, but it's not the same thing as seeing it live, so please bear it with me. Um, so here we have the digital representation of, and I chose this uh, painting by Artemisia, self portrait as the allegory of painting. So if you add that huge word there that I cannot say, and the property and the qualifier, or, or, or the key item, you would get um, uh, that set of images. All They are all with shared data, and the, all of those images are from this painting, and they have shared data, right, about this specific painting. And then, um, if you want to know, for example, and this is just a, like an easy a search, if you want to understand if you have images on Wikimedia Commons that depict a flower, and that flower is the color yellow, then you would use that search, and you would find these images there, right? These ones and several others as well. Okay, so I found a mistake before I was presenting, and it did not update there. Um, but it's okay. It's not Van Gogh, it's Artemisia there on the text. So when you are using uh, Wikimedia Commons uh, and shared data, you can also use the query service, the Wikimedia Commons query service. And for example, you can search for images uh, that uh, depict uh, Artemisia Gentileschi works. So uh, these are some of the results that we see there, right? And I was also gonna, that I had um, put into the slides, the, the um, a way to find um, the depict information about women and their location. So there was also a map here. I'm sorry, 
it did not update properly. But this is uh, some of the possibilities that we can have with Wikimedia Commons query service, right? This, uh, just FYI, that this service, the Wikimedia Commons query service, is still on, bet on beta. So it's not as good as the Wikidata Commons service yet. This is something that we have been talking about, and uh, this is where we are right now. But it still works if you are not doing like large um, um, search and like using it as an, you know, as an institution behind it, this is still manageable to use. But I know this is not, like for those who are here for the longest time, I know this is not um, completely ideal just yet. And also, just one last thing, uh, very technical thing. One of the interesting things about Azure Data on Commons is that you, we also were able to move from uh, weak text templates only to share the data templates on Wikimedia Commons. And that made, of course, what I, uh, everything that I said before about making it more accessible and available in other languages also easier. So it's not only about the shared data part behind the image, but also the information on the page. So like the licensing is also translatable and other information, right? And um, I'm saying all of this, thank you for you know, going with me in this journey, very technical journey, so that we can get to our um, activity related to gender and museums and images here. Um, so one thing that we wanted to bring to this conversation uh, is the fact that, you know, we see on Wikipedia, we talk about it a lot on Wikipedia specifically, that we have a gap when it comes to gender information. And this is not only on Wikipedia, this is on our references, and this is also in our data. This happens on Wikidata, and this is also happens on Wikimedia Commons. And we don't have yet a lot of examples of us addressing this problem, right? So what we are uh, using this, um, using this um, session today is to kind of try and get a little bit more into that conversation with you who are in the room today. Um, so, the shared data on commons as this data uh, repository, it of course um, needs a lot of um, modeling to make it work, the same way that we have several discussions about modeling on Wikidata. It is a different kind of discussion than on Wikidata because this is its own thing, but it's also very complex and very, uh, it needs, it needs, Siobhan, as we have been saying, in we need have spaces to discuss this, right? Um, so here are some of the examples of places that we have been discussing this topic, this topic of modeling, um, shared data on commons data, right, in several different uh, ways. So we have, for example, the example here of the Digital Public Library of America, where they have been publishing the way that they model all of their files. There's also the same thing with the Biodiversity Heritage Library. I brought those two examples. They are two libraries, but they work uh, as museums in the sense that they are um, they are working with media files, with images, right? Um, so I thought it would be okay for our presentation uh, today. And, uh, wait, let's see here. So right now we do have 17.6 uh, million files on Wikimedia Commons with the PICS guidelines, uh, with, the, the, with the PICS uh, information. And we do have those two pages where the PICS are uh, discussed and uh, documented. And we do have a very interesting effort by whose knowledge they launched this decolonizing the internet shared data summary report a few years ago, which is very connected to Wikidata, uh, but it also has some interesting considerations for our topic today. I won't, of course, um, ask you to read this for our activity next, but just a shout out that this has been an example of um, members in the community and the movement trying to decolonize to um, to decolonize and change the way that we are <coughs> modeling our shared data in terms of gender, right? And in terms of other minorities. Um, the last example that I will use here is that, and this is very directly uh, connected to the, um, to the presentation today. So last year we uh, organized this event with uh, uh, Wikimedia Portugal and Wikiditoras Alixis, uh, gender group from Portugal as well. 
And we worked together, foundation, our, my team and another team, and both of them to, uh, wor we worked on our, we organized this event to work on articles about Portuguese women related to culture. And the idea is that we would create uh, awareness among experienced editors about the need to illustrate articles through the introduction of this image suggestions tool. So the participants in this event would uh, receive, as they have already registered to the event before, uh, they would receive notifications on their uh, user page about uh, articles on Portuguese Wikipedia that needed um, images, images from, and they were articles about women, and as I said before, Portuguese related to art, and they would then be able to add or not that image to the article, right? And we all were also asking them to, you know, uh, add um, alt text and all of that so that it would be very much accessible uh, because this was kind of the idea, accessibility overall during this event, right? And this is basically one of the few um, examples of this happening, um, this, topic, this topic being addressed. Uh, the need for modeling guidelines and, and uh, shared data discussions around gender and how we model it. Um, and this is, um, I just wanted to show you that like when we go on commons and we like we paste that search that I mentioned before and we add the depict statements to women, we get this uh, Search right. It is okay. It is. I think it is right now with the media search is showing a very good uh, set of images, but when you go down a little bit, you start to see uh, a lot of mistakes, right? And I think this is the idea for us today to try and start to solve this together, right? Because this is a long time. This is a process that we are not going to solve today, but we will have, I hope, a start, right? So uh, this, is, this was the introduction <laughs> for our hands-on activity. Uh, so we do have three activities for today. And I, well, there are three activities, so I'll ask all of you to you know, be in one of the three groups you can choose. So the first activity that we'll have is uh, writing data modeling guidelines for genders on commons. So if you feel comfortable, if you have some experience with this topic, if you, um, uh, if you would consider yourself kind of a more expert uh, user, either on Wikidata or on Commons, I think this this I think this is one of the most important um, activities that we have today because we don't have guidelines about this topic yet at all, right? And the other um, example here, and this is um, where I also would like um, to have the ability to click on the link. But um, there is this category on Wikimedia Commons that is called category, uh, um, the only women. And the idea uh, is that you would see in that category a lot of images from, uh, in photographs and paintings, in which you, you see that there is only one woman are surrounded by men. And so <laughs> it's very interesting. And then you, when you use that search with the big word that I cannot say, with the depict statements, women uh, and the property for quantity set to one, you can see all of, all of images on commons that are like that. So this is the second activity, to go through this search that is here and add that information. Um, well, the activity is actually twofold. You can go on commons and find um, in this search here, uh, images that don't have um, information about women, about quantity of women appearing in them, and adding the quantity or adding other uh, other um, other information to that same um, uh, field, or you can go ahead and try this search and add more information to that th to those images that are there, right? So to use that category, the only women as the starting point for your activity, basically, and uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Mr. De Don Comos. I can, I can help with that. Yeah. Uh, and the last uh, activity is going through uh, these links. Um, so images depicting women, 
add better depicting depict statements and captions in other languages and possible if you want to add those images to articles as well um, so I do we have uh, access to the slides on the session okay okay so if you want to like these are links with um, paintings uh, depicting women, photographs, posters, and um, some uh, images that are digital representation of. So you can choose from those uh, queries already, those searches already, and add depicts, captions in other languages, and add it to an article if they are not on an article yet. So these are our three activities. And before we go to the activities, I just want to say that we have, um, I have been working in my kind of free time uh, on um, this spreadsheet, which is a spreadsheet that is trying to map glam and gender activities around the community. It's me uh, and Tila who was working uh, with gender. And we actually need help to make this happen because we uh, only speak uh, limited amount of languages, so we can only search and document in the spreadsheet um, th the languages that we know, the activities in languages that we know, and we hope to publish this soon on um, a meta page so that it can be contributed as well from, like, receive contributions from more people. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable with the other three activities, you can also do this. Uh, this is the link to access the, um, the, um, the spreadsheet. And I have learned that people are using QR codes now and not like short links, so <laughs> which is way more accessible. So I do apologize for this. Uh, but yeah, I think we can go ahead to the activities. So um, I'm going to ask for hands if that's OK. Is there someone here who would like to work on the first activity? OK. Oh, sorry. I thought it was there. I'm sorry. Because I'm seeing it here, so yeah. Uh, someone here would like to work on the data modeling guidelines for gender on commons. You? OK. Someone else, you? OK. So can you kind of get together and find kind of maybe a table to work here? We have three tables. Um, Someone here would like to work on the, the only women activity? You, you? I see here, here. Can you go there? I think we have some people there. Um, is there someone here who would like to work on the third activity? You? OK. You? Uh, maybe around here, because they are here, they are there. Yeah, OK. Questions? I don't know. Um, while everyone's just arranging themselves, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Giovanna and Michaela. We've planned this while I've been driving my car between hospital appointments with my mum, and it's been like a real like labour of passion for both of them. Uh, and especially since Giovanna said she was nervous, I think they both deserve like a real like round of applause. <laughs> I don't know why the windows are closed. Um, um, yeah, so I think if you go to the session. I think if, uh, if I, I, can the window open a little bit? Like. Oh. Is there a way that we could have like other sources of light, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, are you guys organizing groups? Have you found your group? Yeah. You can always work alone as well, it is okay.
Maybe you can sit with someone who has one in there? No. No? Okay. So let me just organize the session. Um, okay, so just so we can organize ourselves. Um, who is working on the first activity? Is there? Anyone else would like to work on that activity? The first one. We can help with links as well. No, you can, you can. Yes, of course, of course. The first one is there, that table there. That, that one on the table? This one, yeah. Uh, maybe if you go. an open question actually yeah because they the group one will be working on better guidelines yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't yeah. Uh, so I would say quantity if you can add um, in this case as well Marcus prominent yeah Marcus prominent yeah. if you have like a reference <laughs> like, like if this is um, a museum uh, image for example mm -hmm. you can search on the website and try uh, to see if they have like a reference for this information as well. Okay. Yeah. If you want to go also to the page um, about the page. Um, and this is just a little hello to everybody who's joined online. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. In the room, um, we've split into three different activities um, and we'll be doing this for the next sort of 10, 15 minutes. Um, you can join in um, if you're in the ooh, Wikimania Telegram. I've posted the slides there. Um, so you can join in like asynchronously. Um, otherwise, go and have a cup of tea uh, and we'll be back in 10 minutes and we'll share kind of our thinking all together.
Yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. So sorry to interrupt you. We only have three minutes. Mm. Three minutes now for our session. Um, but I, I can. I, I, I really want to ask you to continue to edit uh, about this topic. Especially, I will go to the table of you guys, number one, so that I, we can establish some way to follow up. Because here, the other two groups, I believe, um, they are more hands-on activities. In this one, is a mo uh, more about document documenting, and like it's longer than this session, right? And I think the most kind of difficult um, activity of the three. Um, but yeah, you, do you want to address the people online? Maybe? Yeah. Um, and thank you everyone who's uh, been joining online. Um, our email addresses are at the end of the slide deck, which I hope you've got hold of, uh, or they're coming on screen now. Um, so please do carry on uh, with the conversation. Um, and also to thank you to everyone who's been making edits in this last section. You've definitely changed the shape of the internet just in the last 20 minutes, which is something that we love to do. So well done to everybody. Um, and we should have a well-deserved coffee break now. Thank you. Thank you for making uh, images of women more visible online. <laughs> <laughs>